This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hello there. I'm here down in Aussie land. Yeah, you know, I don't, I, due to the curvature of the earth, I can't quite see that wave, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got really 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 high so you can see down where i am yes meanwhile all the flat earthers are going no you can see them um <laughs> <laughs> so last week folks obviously we did our big vr episode and uh thank you for everybody that that bore that out of you know 100 minutes of vr that was a long episode but it seems like you guys are really enjoyed it um, got a lot of good info out of it, and don't worry, like we said, we will be doing some more. But I did want to make uh, one correction, and that is, uh, so Jared, you were talking about how when we're in Zen FX2 VR, and you've got your three pinball tables, and I was complaining that, oh, I have to look at the screen, pop up the menu of all the tables, select which table is going to go where. And you were like, no, you just yeah. do a simple button push. And I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> Turns out I can. <laughs> yeah. You just need to be aware that you can do it. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yes, that was a, that, that kind of uh, eliminated one of those small gripes that I had that it was like, oh, oh yeah, I can just burp, 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 cycle through really easy. And there they are. So it's I just wanted to. Super fast. Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted yeah. to bring that point up. Um, and then there was another thing that we completely forgot to mention, and this falls in the realm of, oh, come on, really? Um, yeah. <laughs> with the Stern Pinball Arcade app, when you score high enough that you can get your initials up on the DMD, great, let's go into our initials on the DMD, and what do you get presented with? Burn. Big old DMD in front of your face to enter those initials yeah. in. And I'm like, but why? I can see the DMD perfectly fine. I am in virtual world. I don't need you to put that up there right smack dab in my face. Don't um, break the third wall or the fourth wall or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, it. So that just falls into that category once again of things that made you hyper aware that you are in VR as opposed to just in a room. Reality. Um, mm, now, yeah. that being said, Zen kind of does the same thing in terms of once your table is, your game is over, up pops their menu and it starts doing all your super score stuff. Mm. I think the difference of why that doesn't bother me so much as the, Zen, the, the Stern one is simply because, again, the DMD entry is right there. Super score isn't going to appear on a DMD entry. Um, and as yeah. soon as you do your DMD entry on Stern, then boom, b pops the menu for playing the game. So it's almost like a double menu as opposed to just a single layer menu. Anyway, it, yeah. it, it's just one of those quirks that just kind of like... The other thing that's a bit weird with Stern is where they position their menus as well. There's two actual like um, spatial positions. They position all their game menus. Sometimes it's quite close to you. And sometimes it's a little bit further away as well. Like mm -hmm. there's no consistency in when these overlays um, exist in virtual space. Okay. So yeah, I've noticed that as well. It's subtle, but it's definitely different positioning. There was so, one other thing, and I, I can't remember if I mentioned it. Uh, I think I mentioned it in the show. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jared. But I was talking mm -hmm. about how the table, the, the table slope on the tables, it almost looked like it was always pointing down. Yeah, you did uh, mention that. Right, and it, that was really kind of bothersome to me. I tried yeah. something. <laughs> What'd you do? Well, when setting where the table is, I tried looking directly straight ahead instead of... Typically, I was looking down at the play field and setting the button, right? Yeah. Instead, I looked straight ahead and I set the button for setting the table. And then I looked down and it no longer was sloping down. It had the just... It uh. like subtly then looked more realistic to me looked better uh so that might have been also one of those little quirks where it's like yeah because i was looking down it was making it almost like i was hovering over the table or something i don't know it was you know weird vr perception that was within zen um i did not try it on the other two uh games 
Um, but I, I imagine it's probably going to be the same way for all of them because all three I was experiencing that on. You know what is interesting? And I, I haven't experienced what you're experiencing. And, and the reason is that I don't have to worry about configuring my VR space to line up with a controller. Right. So um, because I'm just sitting in my chair, um, I don't have to like reposition anything in Zen. It just works. Yeah. So I wouldn't have actually seen any table rake perception issues because I never have to reposition anything. Mm, okay. So that's probably why I was not sure what you were really getting at with that last week. So that explains it probably. Again, we're coming, we're talking about quirks between me using, how many years old is the Rift? It's like, what, four or five years old? Something like that. Old yeah. tech versus the latest tech that Oculus has and how people are programming their software to interact with it. So a lot That's of right. my issues that I was having in VR by using the Rift corrected with Jared using uh, the Quest 2. Yeah. So, okay. It's better. Enough of the VR talk. Like I said, we did enough of that last time. We just wanted to just want to throw that out there and get that uh, cleared up, kind of updating <laughs> um, in the past. Just a week. little bit of uh, show errata. Yes, is what we had to do. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> this week, just a small little news announcement from Zen. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty pretty like, trivial, really, right? Yeah, like, you know, nothing. It's just a little little thing called the pinball show. Uh, mm. The pinball show is Zen's new way of doing communication. So yes. in the past, it would be them sending out a trailer to like IGN and we would get the trailer also, but then we would have to wait until IGN had already aired the trailer and then maybe we could air the trailer and then maybe we could have Mel on to do some talking about if we could get everything aligned because, believe me, getting our schedules aligned with Mel's schedule, uh, depending on... No mean feet. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, especially depending on sometimes he was in Budapest (laughs) and us trying to do that. Ooh, that's rough. That was just... (laughs) It was, it was going to be bad for some time zone, and it's usually Australia. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention, bad. you know, our subscription base is not exactly large. No, <laughs> so, well, that's right. You know, although we would get, we could get the message out, we're not going to get it out nearly as well as what IGN could get it out. Um, and no, now, got... not nearly as well as what Zen themselves can do um, by having an that's official right. channel. Exactly. So, the pinball show. Pinball Show is going to be a monthly show, and it's going to have Zen announcements. And so Zen pretty much came out the gate with a rather large announcement. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and play the trailer for you guys of that first bit. Here we go. Okay, so there you go. There's a new pinball effects, folks, <laughs> in the works. That's right. Um, and it's, it's just going to be called pinball, pinball effects. effects. Yeah, not pinball it's not effects. Four. Nope. No. It's just pinball effects. Just pinball effects, because that's not going to cause any confusion at all. But, <laughs> right. but it's a new font. So yes, new font. It's a completely new game. Yes. Yeah. Um, and as you saw there, there's things like they're mentioning that there's going to be Battle Royale, there's new IPs that are coming, um, new gameplay types, all that. So we're going to, we're going to kind of get into that, break it down, uh, discuss these things. Um, we're going to kind of show some highlights from the show and unpack everything that is being said with regards to Mm. that. Here's the thing though, that just kind of sets me off though 
All right. What triggers you? What triggers you, Chris? <laughs> is it going to be 60 seconds of rage from Chris? Oh, it's going to be more than 60 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Strap in, folks. Yeah. So <laughs> you go into some comments or you go into certain Reddit threads or Discord threads and all, whatever, after this show aired. And people were like, eh, it was an announcement of an announcement. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. And it's uh, like, folks, they just confirmed <laughs> that there's a new pinball effects version coming out. What, that's not big enough for you? That's not major <laughs> enough for you? <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> Look at the YouTube comments of the first episode. Right. It's Because uh... then they're like, well, but you didn't give us any details of it. You didn't say when it's coming. Sure they did. It's sometime in 2021. Yeah. Take a wild guess. When did FX... Coming this year. Yeah. <laughs> but probably that's, that's not in the next thing. month, folks. When they say no, the probably. next year, <clears throat> let's, let's put at least a six-month distance from where we are now on it. And that's to like mm. at the earliest... I'm guessing we ain't seeing this puppy until end of third quarter, probably fourth quarter of the year. To make like maybe to line up with spring in the U.S. or something like that. No, spring in like the U.S. The... is about to happen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry, winter in the U.S. Yes, winter yeah. in the U.S. So I'm thinking spring here. I would yeah. guess probably not seeing it until September, or October. That's just yeah. me throwing that out there. Um, and I'm basing that off of when FX3 was released. Similar time frame. When, you, 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 okay. <laughs> when we heard about it to when it actually came out, there was a long lead up time. So Right, okay. See, again, that was something that I wasn't um, privy to because I was on mobile at that stage. I had uh... no cares for the PC. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I didn't really experience that sort of uh, lead time with announcement to delivery. So that's interesting that it's a it seems like a reasonable assumption then to sort of base it on. Yeah, that's that's what I'm kind of guessing. But mm. so, oh, pinball effects brand new version, whatever that may entail, that wasn't good enough. But then, oh, battle royale. Well, I don't like battle royale. Then so if you don't like it then apparently that wasn't good enough for you. Um, right. And instead yeah. what do people just like you didn't tell us any new tables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> like, that, because guess what, folks? It's a monthly show. They're probably going to save content for when the stuff was actually about to come out. Mm, not, you know, blow the cherry <laughs> on the first show. Go, look, here's the whole year laid out for you. Bye-bye, no more shows. Yeah, no. no like, not, that's not, 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 how, not how these shows work. <laughs> It's, no, yeah. not not in the least. So, um, anyway, that's that. That's kind of my. It's like I just laugh when things aren't good enough for them. And then the the, the topper of this, and this is kind of maybe it, it kind of cracked me up. People were mad that they didn't mention anything about VR, and I don't know how much of that is us to blame for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> having it's... done our gigantic VR show. Um, because apparently we are, the, we are the canary in the mine for the studio, apparently. We we <laughs> we like to re reveal everything before like the main user bed comes up. Because, you know, I don't know. Even, even <laughs> though we clearly stated that we knew that a VR announcement was going to be coming probably in sometime in February, based off of what Mel had said specifically... A few weeks no. earlier in the Arcade One Up Weekly show, yeah. So as an off why comment. why are you then going? But you didn't. It ain't February. Well, it's going to be by the time people watch this. But it wasn't it February. <laughs> it's right. Yeah, it's we're not quite there yet. We're nearly there. Nearly there. Just just got to wait a little bit. Next month, I w I would think probably on the show, possibly. That and it's possible they, that they, it's possible that you know, as all things game developing, maybe February doesn't be the month that they announce it. Maybe they save it for March. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Could even be April. Well, we don't know. <laughs> so anyway, so, I, just, I just laugh that when people don't get the announcement that they want, which again, I don't know what announcement they did want, but if they don't get the announcement that they want, then everything is utter trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Junk. Horrible, 
Horrible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's <laughs> move on to the uh, the next uh, bit of this here. Uh, fire this up. FX4, you know, whatever. There's a lot going on with this game. And when we summed up all the pieces and we looked at the big picture, we realized that we were actually really rebooting Pinball FX. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there. Keyword. Mel saying, we are really rebooting Pinball FX. <laughs> Reboot's a pretty big thing. It's not just a continuation, a flip. It, reboot. Next version. Right. Reboot entails a lot. Um, so keep that in mind with everything else that Mel says. Um, and we needed to just kind of start over from scratch. We have new technology we're working in. There's new consoles. New technology we're working in and new consoles. Well, not quite. We'll, we'll get to the new technology part, but new consoles. Yeah. PS5, the new yeah. Xbox. Oh. Uh, Nintendo hasn't officially come out and said anything yet, but the rumors are rife that there's going to be a Switch Pro. Oh, they've been saying that for years. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, but, the, you know, the steam is gathering with there being a Switch Pro coming. Yeah, it, so. it makes sense for them to do it. It's well and truly up for a reboot. Like, the yeah. hardware is getting a bit old now. Yeah, okay. Um, let, so it does need... Let's, let's see what else he has to say. I consider this our next-gen platform. Um, there's a lot of new features. There's maybe some new business models. Ah, maybe there are some new business models. Let's pause on that for a moment. Because, Jared, people are freaking out <laughs> over yes. possible new business models. People are going, oh, my God, it's going to be subscription. It's, it's going to be a freemium game. Yep. I'm not going to be able to own my pinball. Yep. Let's, um, let's lower the temperature, folks, because I'm not saying that subscription stuff might not be here, but as a whole... I don't think they're going to turn on all the consoles and on the PC and on mobile and everything across it. They're going to ditch everything that they've done for the past 14 years and go with a completely different kind of service that everybody no. would scream bloody murder over. So No, because they know that people don't like it. Yeah. Really. For, for, like, for the main stuff that you want to be playing all the time, you know, get tables, everything. People want to actually get permanent entitlements to those. Now, I don't say own them because you, you never own anything with DLCs. You have a right to use it. Yeah. And people don't, that's another thing that people don't get. Like when you go and buy a pack through Steam, that's a license for you to use the software. It doesn't mean you own the software. Just remember that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to actually go again. We'll unpack some of this even further a little bit later mm. on, but let's keep on going on with uh, with what this is. This new feature like Pinball Real. And so it just didn't really fit into the FX3 framework. And as the game wasn't pa is not packaged the way that you knew it from before. So it is a total reboot. I expect this will be a platform that we support for the next huge phase. You know, you're not going to see FX2 come. Consoles are operating differently now. Technology changes much faster. And so uh, to support that, you just need a game that can operate across platforms. That's really what FX is designed to do. So there you go. It's they're, they're taking into consideration the future of every other, you know, whatever this game can be playing, being played on. Um, mm. You know, there is, like you said, specifically, it's not FX2 just becoming FX3 with, you know, slightly different upgrade of graphics and that's it. Um, mm. you know, it, 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 it's literally taking all we've learned about pinball since we started doing pinball and turning that into a brand new experience. Right now, it's, it's... you think about this too, Zen just announced, and it obviously was in the works for a while that they, you know, got bought out by, what was that name? Embracer group. I Embracer. think. Yeah. yeah. By Embracer. Um, Mel talked about having to have a 10-year plan. Yeah. I suspect that a lot of priorities got shifted. <laughs> Cuz we didn't think that probably we didn't think that there was going to be a new pinball effects version anytime soon. Um it didn't no. didn't seem to really warrant it other than people wanting online play, but other than that nobody was complaining about per se about the graphics. Um 
No, I mean, they were the, the engine they're using you know, up until this announcement is been pretty good like it's the the graphics are perfectly reasonable i mean it was able to handle the the new physics like changes they were doing pretty well so you know it probably wasn't like it wasn't like to the point where if you compare that with farsight when we we're saying you you guys really need to look at a new engine right because yours is aging badly it wasn't nearly to that point no because i mean they just done the refresh uh from fx2 to fx3 that was a yeah, refresh that was yeah, yeah. And that was that was only three years ago, I think. Yeah. Um so, so pretty I, much it was pretty much aligned with the new consoles back then, right? Like yeah. 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 yeah it was at the yeah. it was at the PS3, PS4 shift. Mm. Um so I I really think that this I don't know why uh, merger, I guess is a good term for it. Um mm. probably accelerated plans and reprioritized so. where they were basically saying, hey, you guys need to be on top of <laughs> these new consoles, and here's an influx of cash to let you pay for doing that. Because that's yeah. the hardest thing. When you stop what you're doing in order to do the next thing, well, you probably need to hire a whole bunch more people if you don't want to stop completely the other, and yeah. that, re that requires a whole new set of capital. Well, boom, all of a sudden you got a group that says... Here's some capital. Make it happen. Um, well, there's two ways, right? So you could you could do it the way you said, or you could like stop really releasing as much content as you normally do for a year and work out what you do. Right. right? So you don't necessarily have to release anything if you're sitting on a big nest egg of cash from a uh, um, an investor, essentially, because you've got the money there to, to pay people mm -hmm. and keep the lights on. So... Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. Anyway, that's kind of uh, that. Now, let's let's go ahead and uh, th that was kind of the overview of what Mel hmm. was talking about of everything that was was going to be coming into this. Um, let's go into the next part. See what he has to say there because I wound up the the, the pinball effects the, the or the pinball effects show <laughs> the pinball show <laughs> um, didn't. Give all the information. There is some more information that wound up popping up on Reddit and Discord, and I wound up swimming through some of that to try and expand upon things that Mel is saying. Um, let's see exactly what he's saying next, and maybe we can get into some of that. Uh, you know, the platform question is difficult right now. We're announcing, you know, the game a little early because uh, we just wanted to get conversational about it. I would love to confirm platforms. I mean, ideally, I can tell you exactly where this is going to ship. There's a lot of business in this game because we have so much licensed content. Okay, so, yeah. Not saying what platforms it's going to be on. Part of that is because of all the licensing that they're having mm -hmm. to deal with. So, think about this. <laughs> Again, if they are... If Nintendo is coming out with a Nintendo Pro Switch... They Obviously, wouldn't be able to talk about that. Right. They can't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so that's no, that's no, they're going to they're wait. Can, yeah, they're going to wait for Nintendo to say, yes, you can now talk about that. It's the same case with the uh, Arcade 1-Up. Zen couldn't say anything about Arcade 1-Up until Arcade 1-Up said something about yeah they're running the show yeah like, there's a Zen lot, just running the lot of licensing going on here um you've seen how mm. kg mel has been regarding the mandalorian table saying yeah, i can I, mean, uh, I can just... say there's a mandalorian table i can say it's supposed that's to be it. in spring that's it i'm not saying anything <laughs> else all... because I'm don't pain want to of off death Lu... <laughs> yeah don't want to take <laughs> off <laughs> lucasfilm <laughs> it's... no that's not something you want to like mess around with right and again no. this is part of the expansion and growing of their company having been expanded upon or bought out by embracer we're looking at a much larger scope of things so if you're wondering why the information here is a little bit cagey and and not complete it's veiled for a reason yeah like they've got to be super careful at the moment until all the ducks are nicely in a row and they can <laughs> and it's publicly known knowledge from the actual person or group or company that's actually producing the console or the thing. Right. It's announcements are hard. So, so I wanted to, 
<laughs> I want to uh, focus in on one of the Reddit comments. Um, this came from Mel. And it says, We will be able to confirm platforms and answer questions about backwards compatibility. Because that was also a huge question people are then throwing out. Mm -hmm. uh, once we have worked out some of the outstanding licensing hurdles involved. I do promise to let you know if there are any tables not coming to the new platform. I know we do not, did not handle this well with FX2 to FX3 previously. That's pretty yeah. pretty big admission. Um, kind of yeah. an obvious admission. And yeah, because I did really get raked out of the coals of that. There's a lot of... I mean, even today, there's ill will still floating around about that. Yeah. So, And I know that know. some of that ill will is that people are like, well, I just transferred the game from my Xbox to the new Xbox but in order to do that it was almost like you had to eliminate your information on the old Xbox and then so then when they right. went to go download it again on that there is no way of downloading the South Park table and uh, the you know Plants vs. Zombies or whatever you know some of those other tables that didn't the, the football uh, Super League football um, yeah. they're no longer available they're on the store, so now they're saying, hey, you know, I lost my product, and there's no way for me to get it back. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that there's where they're saying, hey, look, we'll communicate what's going to be transferring over, what's not going to be transferring over, um, you know, in case you need to get your purchases in now. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so, you know, I lost, I lost my entitlement to play the content. It's not, again, like DLCs, you don't own it. <laughs> right. Um, but I do find it interesting that that phrasing here worked out uh, compatibility, backwards compatibility, once we have worked out some of the outstanding licensing hurdles involved. We've that said must it. must mean that when like when they're talking to all the studios and partners that are like in the game, they go, so wh how, how are you going to let us use your properties that we've got in there at the moment? Like, will you let us have them on the previous platform as well as the new platform or do you want like a clean start or well, because like... here's something that happened with that transference from fx2 to fx3 uh. because it's new new platform licensing like new licensing contracts had to be issued and yeah. basically all the licensors the license holders are like sweet people are gonna have to buy the game again we get another bite of the apple yeah. Zen absorbed that cost. They paid off the licensors and right. said, no, we're going to let the people carry over. I don't know how much that's going to happen this time again. I mean, it might happen again. It might not. I don't, it, it's really hard to say. Obviously, Mel's not saying yet because they're, they're trying to work that out because some licensors might be cool with that. Others might be like, no. We want yeah, to we be want paid again for our product. And the best way to think about this is you have Star Wars on DVD. Now you want to buy the 4K, or now you want it in 4K. You don't just go to Target and be like, hey, so give me that, like, my 4K. Hey, here's my old DVD. Yeah. Like, can I have a new one now? No. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work, work like that. that. You want the no. upgrade? <laughs> you want that pay upgrade? Up. You got to pay. And. You know, the studios are like, yeah, we get another bite of the apple. It's it's the studio doing a double that. Yeah. yeah, it's like they're not seeing it in the game industry. And like they're going, hang on a second. Uh, we're not sure we like that. Yeah, because I mean, they'd be uh, like, yeah. okay, great. So we had all these people buy our game five years ago when it came out. Why can't we have them buy it again? Um, yeah. So again, I don't know. That's I, I'm to, I, What I'm saying here is probably what Zen is hearing from the licensors. Yeah, that this is the language that they'd be hearing. This is these are the conversations they'd probably be entertaining now. Yeah. It's like, hey, we want more money, Zen. And Zen's and gonna Zen's be like, gonna, Yeah, but that's gonna tick off our yeah, customer base. The, the license are like, who cares? <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, that's your problem, not ours. We want our money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so. That's a you problem, not a we problem. That's a you so <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Um, yes. So I imagine that that's what mm. a lot of that has to do with the licensing hurdles. Um I would not be surprised in the least either if Zen is trying to secure some of those licenses that were lost. Mm. Um, I bet I would, with 
fair confidence say that they're probably trying to talk talk to South Park Studios to be able to relicense that table. I yeah, exactly. wouldn't be surprised if they were talking to Super League and trying to relicense that. I think the Plants yep. vs. Zombies, that's a no-go. I think that's a non That's EA. Yeah. yeah that's... Um, Ms. Splosion Man, I don't know. Nobody really ever seems to remember that one. <laughs> Nobody clamors I for it. never played it. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know if they would be going for that one. I would love it. Check this out. Here's the, How is this for speculation, Jared? Mm-hmm. Back in the PS3 Zen 2 days, there yeah. was the Street Fighter 2 table and the Ninja Gaiden table. Those were exclusive to PlayStation. Xbox had uh. some exclusive titles to theirs. Um, well, who else owns the license or has licensing with Capcom for Street Fighter 2? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Arcade 1-Up? Yeah, and that's right. Gee, if maybe there was a reissue, and God, please update the code if you do. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> if there was a reissue of the Street Fighter Two table, that would be packaged really easily into a pinball machine with all the Street Fighter Two graphics on the side that retailers mm. would probably be like, yes, we do like Street Fighter Two. That cabinet sold well in our stores. Yeah, we'll have this in pinball form. Thank you very much. Yeah. So give us give us a give us a couple of pellets, thanks. I, I yeah. honestly would not be surprised in the least if that happened. You know, they say, didn't they, Chris, that you know, when we ask Mel, you know, does this open up more licensing opportunities now you have someone like RK one up in the mix? And the answer was, well, yeah. <laughs> in short. So And you're trying yeah. to break into the Asian market. That's a title that will do that. What other title yep. does Capcom own that is very friendly with the Nintendo crowd? Mega Man. Hmm. Maybe that kind of thing. You know, I think there's various licensing opportunities that would pop open. There's um, a few. Oh, Thank God. You. If Let's start this one again. Ooh, if they get in bed with Capcom, could we actually see the Capcom pinball tables that were <laughs> developed? Oh, now that would be interesting. <laughs> yes, folks. It's oh. time for discussions about Big Bang Bar again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Highly unlikely. Well, look, you know, new new platform, Chris. New yeah. rating. Except yeah. for it, that would also require new emulation, and there was only ten tables ever made. So, Boom, probably not. Probably not. I, I look, a very good one for um, Magic Pixel to pick up. Um, I would think. <laughs> we keep on throwing. We keep on trying to throw a business towards hey, Magic Pixel. We really Magic do. <laughs> go, go, have, have these have these licenses and absolutely do everything with them. Meanwhile, the four name. guys in the office are going, "No, no." <laughs> <laughs> He's going to stop it, you two. <laughs> We've had enough of, of hearing from you guys. Um, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, I think we can go back into the video and finish off this little section here. Mm. Uh, so, uh, But right now, I can just tell you, this is our next-gen platform. Can't confirm specific platforms, but uh, we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Again, you know, just stay tuned to this show. Uh, we'll let you know. So yeah, again, just more of the uh, can't confirm what uh, platforms it's going to be coming to, but I think we can guess what the obvious ones are. Uh, moving on to the mm. next portion. Yeah, I know PR and marketing are cringing right now. Like, Mel, do not spill the beans. You know, like, but I'll tell you this. We have a lot of new IPs coming. <laughs> uh, partners we've never worked with before. Um, some things that I've hinted at personally, you know, you've seen me talk about them or hint about them. They're coming this year, you guys. This is the year they're going to hit. You're going to hear about uh, all this news right here on the pinball show. Like this is where you can go now to, to like get these announcements. Um, but it's, it's really cool. Um, yes. Some amazing surprises coming and uh, just 2021 is going to rock, dude. I mean, like seriously, it's going to be really, really good off the hook. Right. Okay. So brand new IPs uh, and the things that Mel has been hinting at coming in 2021. So um, I think, in terms of those new IPs, we are looking at, I'm guessing 
some more of those Williams DMD, licensed DMD. I don't think they have much choice not to now. Like, they're at the point where that's kind of getting, like, the only things they can really produce that don't have, you know, right. that they're sort of, like, semi-license free. You know what I mean? Like, we're... And I, I don't out. have the... I didn't include it in the video, uh, but at one point Mel mentioned all the previous partners he mentioned, you know, Bethesda and Telltale and uh, uh, Valve... You know, mm. so all these things that they also so we also might be talking just plain new IPs for Zen original tables to as well. I, I mean, I fully, I fully suspect that. Um, you know, essentially, you know, the Mandalorian isn't a new IP because it's it's you know from Star Wars, but the Mandalorian you know, itself is a new IP. Is a new IP, yeah. Which, so, by the way, they said that they're going to announce a second Star Wars table in the February pinball show. In before Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I said. I said, <laughs> I said it's the Jar Jar Binks table because, you know, Misa loves some pinsy ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> says no one ever. Yes, yeah, says no one ever. <laughs> Although I legitimately would like a, I would like a, a prequel pack of, of the Star Wars tables. I, I, we need a prequel pack, and we need to get Rise of Skywalker. I don't care what anybody thinks of the movies. Um, I just want all the movies represented in pinball form. Yeah, that's right. So, but you know, you think about how good. Like the only thing, like if you were thinking, just entertain for a moment a Jar Jar Binks table, it would just be you constantly smacking the living out of Jar Jar. Binks. Oh, he'd have like to be a bash movie, toy. <laughs> every everything would be oh in this mode, smack Jar Jar Binks in the head with a ball. In this mode, please repeat. <laughs> that's all you'd be doing except this time <laughs> hit him with the nuts <laughs> his ears you know, act as ball doing. locks you know oh um, yeah it'd be as, as mm. him him fumbling the, the energy balls like he did in the movie he'd be fumbling the balls and uh, they spill all over um, well that's what they did in episode one that's that what I'm talking mode. about yeah yeah and you know they didn't bring in episode one it wasn't a terrible pinball machine so anyhow um, so yeah so there you go there's going to be new IPs uh, what those are going to be, who knows? But um, like I said, good money is that it's going to be some of these Williams tables, licensed mm. tables. Um, but additionally, good money is that you're going to see some Zen Originals with uh, a licensed IP. I don't, I, well, I was going to say, I seriously doubt that Zen's going to be doing uh, fully original non licensed, but then we forget that. They've got in their back pocket that <laughs> that three pack of tables. So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens this year. I think there's going to be some stuff that even us, with the amount of experience we've had with the platform over the years, we won't even be able to predict them. Like it's going to be left field stuff that you know, particularly those lot IPs and stuff that are you know from the the Asian market. Yeah, I think those are going to be surprises. Like if they actually start coming into the platform, we're not going to really see those coming at all. They're going to be like probably good as well, but also like oh, oh, of course that makes total sense. But it's like I never would have thought, you know. Yeah. Um, let me see what our next portion of the video is because I can't remember what I have coming up next uh, so I might pause this really quick because it might not be ready for me to talk about it <laughs> okay so pinball oh yep I don't want to talk about pinball royale yet okay so <laughs> we're going to get to pinball royale there's no doubt about that um, mm -hmm. but what I did want to touch upon this was stuff that popped into the reddit thread um, so so one of the questions was about the physics, okay? And mm -hmm. Mel mentioned, he said, we are working to make sure the entire library is supported with the Williams physics. And then he goes, funny, we started out calling the new physics pro physics, but I think everyone now knows them as Williams classics physics. <laughs> yeah. So hooray! I don't know how smart that would be to label it as Williams physics because now you're making your physics now engine tied exactly. to a licensed property. But, um, 
Yeah, it's mm, it's just like the new physics. But <laughs> seriously, know, get rid like... of the, the, the pro physics. Just never worked for me. I did not like calling them pro physics. Well, if they're going to apply those those physics to every single table, they're no longer Williams physics. So you need to think of a new name. Right. Um, <laughs> other things that were, and this is going to tie into the uh, Pinball Royale, which we're going to have a lot to say about. Um, but yeah. some other things that were uh, mentioned. Um, let's see. Some pillars from today. This is again, Mel uh, wrote this. Pinball Royale and live events. We want the game to feel alive and fresh all the time. New table IPs will feed these pillars. Um, this is something that we mentioned with Farsight. We were like, guys, your game is dying on the vine because there's nothing exciting going on other than DLC. You're not enticing yeah. people to come back. How do you entice them? We were arguing at the time, resetting leaderboards, making it yes. something that you need to come in active every year to re-stake your claim. So yeah. doing live events, um, that would be a big part of that. Uh, Akos then followed that up by saying, Pinball Royale, a clan system, mm, challenge modes, mm. a career mode. Uh, we are switching engines, so completely new visuals. We got new IPs on the way. That's a lot of stuff, Akos. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, first off, clan. I can guarantee you there will be a blockade clan. <laughs> uh -huh. Just, it will happen. It will happen. Um, so uh, all you good players, you're going to come join us, right? Yeah, that's right. You'll come to our clan. <laughs> be, be, be part of our clan. Um, challenge modes who knows if that's the same challenge modes that we're used to now or not i don't know what career mode necessarily would be if that's just another way like, of doing super score or i think so it's probably like career mode would be you know goals i reckon they're going to take a few leaves out of uh, magic pixel and have like um you know those you know chase a light thing or you know that type of oh, okay. thing sure you know what i mean sure yeah um would make sense and then uh and then we are switching engines Mm. So completely new visuals. Later, <laughs> Mel writes, uh, updating each table with a new physics system is not done at the push of a button. It's basically a completely rebuild of the game. And with a library the size that we have, it's a monumental task. You may have heard me mention that we are working with new technology, which also creates the opportunity to get this work done. So I think it's safe to say, Jared, they're scrapping their old graphics engine and working into a new graphics engine. Yeah, which was the the PX engine um, is what the, the engine was called before, which has served them now for, I think it's about 10 years. Okay. Um, so that one's going. And insert new one here. Easy, right? And, yeah. and, and specifically, we're talking about Graphics engine, not a physics engine necessarily. I'm sure the physics engine is like they've been working on that, tinkering with that. They're not going to just like scrap that for a brand new. <laughs> yeah, and that might actually be PX. Like PX that... may actually be the 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 physics engine that you're talking about there. Yeah, because so I I don't know what I don't know what graphics engine that they're uh, currently running on. Um, but yeah, it's sure interesting either. that they mention this. So why would they need though a new engine? And how would this create the opportunity to get the work done? Well, if you use a new engine that is scalable to various platforms based on, you know, what... Uh, let's say on PC, obviously you can have all the bells and whistles, all the everything turned up to ultra, essentially, yeah. with lighting and all that stuff. But then you want to throw it down to the Switch. Well, it can't handle all that. Well, that's fine. You just tick off... You know, you just have a profile. Right. Profile you're, says you're not going to have profile. this, 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 and this function. We can just put the slider down to zero. Boom, no problem. And then port it straight over and cut the build, ship it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. I think that that's like, going to be between frameworks, like you know, having to develop on the the PS5 native framework versus Xbox's framework. You know, having one way to sing essentially single source and produce a build on demand just by adjusting settings and parameters like that is a big selling point for the ability to iterate quickly and not have to um try and retrofit features into other platforms like farsight had to do right in their development right because that was literally bad oh i mean 
Farsight alone, on PC, they had their DX9 version. They had their mm-hmm. DX11 11. version. The, it was two codes. It was two separate codes. It wasn't mm. even just them flipping a switch and having it go. And so they would correct a bug in in DX9, and it would wind up causing a bug in the 11. DX11 because they had copied certain portions of code over, and then they had to chase it down. So they were like doing double work every single yeah. time. You don't want to do that. That's, that's inefficient. So yeah, if you can have all of... All of your platforms are wrapped up into one graphics engine that can do it all. That makes things much more efficient. You can crank through these things. You can do all these massive uh, upgrades to all these tables. Um, Makes sense. The other thing, and this was also on Reddit, uh, somebody said, can we expect Williams VR tables on PSVR? So that's uh, Sony's VR. And Mel writes, this needs to happen. Needs to happen. Needs to happen. So if we think about the VR world uh according to oculus you have three choices <laughs> for your graphics engine that will work with the quest 2 mm, that's right unity 3d unreal engine and then a natively developed native. engine that you obviously are working on yourself i mm. suspect that they're probably not doing their own anymore it would be much easier as you grow and expand to pop into one of these other engines that is already scalable to all the various platforms including mobile that's right you, you if well you know if you start writing your own like development platform you're essentially no longer a software company you're a platform development company yeah because <laughs> you've got to support the whole thing and it's just you, this <laughs> your time's better spent elsewhere so you take an existing one and you start using it yeah so I think that's very interesting with where this can go. Um, we've seen mm-hmm. some, uh, you know, splash reels of what can be done with lighting and uh, particle physics and stuff in some of these new engines. That it's are pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing because it uses so few resources of the CPU. Yeah. So if you start having that kind of technology at your fingertips and being able to use it. Think about this. Arcade One Up has already started thinking about how are we going to get things like NFL Blitz into a cabinet? Yeah, because that used a whole different, much larger. That, that was using a ROM bay or a, a disc based. Uh, it was a disc based system. Yeah, yeah, system. They're obviously not going to do that in their cabinets, um, so they're going to be seeking out a new way of doing probably these games using some kind of an engine of this this sort. Well, right. if that starts being produced for that, they could put that same thing into the pinball machines. And mm. then all of a sudden, developing for Arcade 1-Up is also, boom, easy. Throw it over with wonderfully perfect graphics, not just Android port of graphics. That's right. So. Just flick a couple of parameters to knock down the um, stuff for the system on the chip they're using. And um, off you go. In fact, I think a lot of these frameworks actually have development targets for certain SOCs or systems on a chip. So if you've got a PS5 or a PS4, that's just preset preset things that you just export to. Yeah. So you don't even need to do a lot of optimization or tweaking. It's just like, oh, yeah, I want to publish for PS4. Click, done. So where people are not being excited about everything that was said, and that's because you're not listening closely enough. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty to get excited about um, and to, to speculate of where this is going um, and what this could mean for the game. Um, I think where people get bugged is they immediately start thinking of what's it going to cost them. Again, don't know. Well, of course, like people always think about you know what's going to be the hit on their pocket because you know people have been stung in the past. Sure, plenty of times by you know you know getting done with a platform upgrade and having to rebuy everything. I know there's there's plenty of customers on the far side side who've had to rebuy everything a couple of times mm-hmm. you know across all the different platforms they own and you know they it's pretty costly after a while particularly with a large catalog um so yeah you can see why people would be a little bit uh, careful about it but again i think about with these with the if you have a unified graphics engine across all your platforms that means all your platforms could potentially talk to each other and why is that important now we'll talk about pinball royale 
Yeah, but that's right. Battle Royale. Battle Royale action. Let's go into this. Oh, it didn't. There we go. Now we'll play. Royale. I don't know. It's going to be bonkers. Like, it's just going to be so fun. It's an entire kind of new creation within Pinball FX. I think it's going to be a real pillar of the game for a long time. Um, it's going to be kind of crazy. Uh, you're going to have a lot of players all together at the same time. You'll be able to do things to different players, affect their game. Um, and at the end, you're going to have a pinball wizard. So we'll be revealing a lot more about Pinball Royale in the time ahead. I know everyone's going to want to check it out. Like, what is it? We've been doing some early testing, a lot of prototyping, a lot of iteration. We are going to get some early feedback, so like a beta or something like that, right? So and I'll just say, no, none of us normal beta testers have beta tested it yet. So no. <laughs> I think it'll maybe be coming soon, but everything's been internal right now based off of... It was like, oh, really? You're, you're beta testing? What? Oh. <laughs> Where's my key? <laughs> right? Okay, moving on. So, um, yeah. yeah, you'll be able to check it out really soon. So Battle Royale games are often uh, seasonal. Are we going to see seasonal events with, with Pinball FX? Okay, actually, I'm going to pause it there. We're not going to talk about the seasonal thing yet because that's going to move into a different area. Let's talk Battle Royale, Jared. What exactly <laughs> is Battle Royale? Um, I wasn't familiar with it myself other than knowing that Nor Fortnite I. was. Um mm. But Mel, he's going to specifically mention um, Tetris 99, Fortnite, and uh, PUBG, which is Player Unknown Battleground. Um, as Huge game. Being these large uh, battle royale games. Tetris 99, I took a look at, and that's the one I think that is most likely to be our clue as to mm -hmm. what battle royale is going to look like. Um, so let me share this screen here. There we go. This is Tetris 99. Mm. So you got your main field right here in the middle, but look at all these over to the side. There is 99 of these play fields. Interesting mm. that they are all very much in the shape of a pinball table. <laughs> and these right. are all active. Like you can see them changing in real time as you're playing. This That's is pretty wild. Eh? This is huge, folks. This is huge because first off, this means that Zen is cracking the online gameplay aspect. If they can mm. crack it for this, having ninety nine fields up on the same time that you're battling against and affecting other players, that means we might just get true head to head. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, if you can crack ninety nine, I'm pretty sure you can crack four players. <laughs> or in real time because you know 99 like the interesting thing too is you know looking at the the tetris 99 screen yeah you see that like those play fields are essentially thumbnails mm -hmm. like the the amount of um how you would need to stream that level of fidelity is the reason why they can do 99 on screen at once right yeah like you don't like they're detailed enough and they're as you can see this there's a bit of intelligence here as well they're high contrast enough that you can still see the detail yeah. really zoomed out and really small. Well, what you're not seeing in this image, okay, over here you see this little uh, hexagon action. Well, yeah. what that is is who you're targeting. So in Tetris 99, uh, you yeah. can, by clearing uh, levels, by clearing rows, you can attack other players. And you choosing who to attack based on who's close to a KO, uh, random, just person attack people that are attacking you attack people that are mm -hmm. earning badges while they're playing um and there's little lines and and graphics that are popping and you know showing you who's doing what to you and warning you and all this stuff so it's very interactive you know what's going on so yeah. i started thinking about how would this work in pinball what would what would be the goal obviously your goal one would be to keep your ball alive i imagine yeah so how Don't would train. you how would you be earning points or upgrades to slam somebody else and what would that slam be i mean oh it'd be like like half powered flippers maybe oh sure i mean if you want to talk about the the things that you can attack somebody with yeah reverse flippers half powered flippers oh yeah uh, one flipper not working um uh, turn the table upside down do you, like we've seen that happen right weighted ball uh you know with no bounce yeah lead ball yeah, yeah, lead, lead ball. ball. I mean, there's all sorts of things that you can you could do that way. Um, how would you send that attack? 
hitting combo after combo would be a good one. Um, starting, mm-hmm. I don't know what tables they'd, they'd be using. Something tells me you're gonna have. It's not going to be. Hey, we're playing. You know this Williams table this this week or whatever. I, I have feeling that it's going to be a Zen original design. Um, you reckon? I kind of do, just because that would be it would make it easier. Wouldn't it? it would make it easier and make it run more efficiently over ninety nine <laughs> playfields. I don't know. Um, I could be. Otherwise, I could be you have compl- to like redesign. You'd have to redesign the rules for what did what across. Right. All the tables. Right. I mean, Mel's already hinted that you know that's non-trivial to do physics. So imagine trying to implement that rule structure. Yeah. Across all tables, and what happens if you know some tables don't have certain elements to them? Like right. if a table doesn't have bumpers or something like that, how are you going to tie that rule in? So you almost need to control. You're right. I think you probably would need to have some control over what tables appear. It might be a, like a sub-selection of tables. Like you know, let's let let's pick a number like four play fields or something like that. That they know they can actually really tightly control, which is what the they do Royal with. Life. They've done that with the online skills uh, multiplayer. Um, there's mm-hmm. only two tables at any given time, that, and usually they leave them those two tables up for months that uh, they're yeah. having everybody play with. Um, all right, well, this actually works. This goes into the next section, uh, the last section of video that we have, because um, this will further down the rabbit hole. Here we go. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, we're huge fans of games like uh, Fortnite and um, PUBG and all Fortnite, those games. PUBG. You know, we took a lot of inspiration from Tetris 99. Took and a lot of inspiration. Sort of seasonal events that allow us mm. to refresh content, to keep things interesting. Um, is That's kind of, you know, that's what we're going for. You're going to see that. So right there, seasons to refresh the content. That makes sense. So yeah, every now and then the table will change. Um, keep on going. It also allows us to do really fun and unique things with our brands and the IPs that we work with. So we get a lot of new creative freedom and a lot of new things. It's just going to keep it really fresh. Uh, it's going to be really kind of evolving on a constant basis. It's going to be really cool. I'm... All right. So there you go. It, it's having fun with the licenses. They're going to be allowed to have that fun. Um, that's going to... Again, if you look at Fortnite... When they do a new season, all of a sudden there's new characters. You know, they had a period where it was like, you know, Deadpool. And, and I don't know if I think it's right now it's Terminator or something like that. But, I mean, you're able to bring in these licenses. So if all of a sudden you have a table that is licensed <laughs> in this fashion, um, then that will make the licensor you... very happy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like, uh, well, you know, Fortnite even did things like live concerts in yeah. the game. And stuff like that. Like it was like Fortnite itself was just very much, well, an ecosystem or a platform that was basically able to take pretty much any license, shove it in there and make money from it. Right. So you can kind of see why Zen might want to be getting into this particular space. Now, the <laughs> one th- <laughs> the one thing that people have been freaking mm-hmm. out about, and we mentioned at the beginning, was when Mel mentioned new business models. Mm. If there is one area that this works really well in, it would be your Battle Royale thing. Again, think about Fortnite. Think about Rocket League. Um, Mm. They're free to play, but there is also, you can purchase packs. You can purchase a subscription, a season subscription. And what does that give you? It gives you extra, um, extra stuff. So I had gone to Engadget and found them kind of doing a, a breakdown of what Fortnite does. Um, mm. We're saying a battle battle pass currently costs 950 V-Bucks or a little less than $8. Fortnite crew subscription makes sense, therefore, on the months that the battle pass is released because you're also getting a bonus 1,000 V-Bucks, so it's all of a sudden you're dealing with coins and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And it's, it's basically for people that want to have exclusive gear that they're wearing, right? Yeah. Well, how does it's, that it's work? It's actually Chrome. It's just Chrome in game. Chrome. Right. Yeah. So how does that work with pinball? Well, just look at the Williams app. You can have custom flippers, custom balls, custom ball trails. Mm-hmm. These are things that I would not be surprised if you're able to, by doing a subscription, have. Um, yeah, that's right. Bling out your thing. Make yours unique. Um, 
Yeah. Because so when you're going head to head, your play field looks unique. Exactly. Uh, yep. That's right. So I don't think that the model of the how we you know outright purchasing tables. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think no. that if there's going to be a subscription, again, don't know if there is or not. I'm just basing this off of people going ape shit over <laughs> the the possibility of a subscription. That this is where it would yeah. probably fall. It's going to fall within your battle royale. Um, that's what makes yeah. the most sense because that's the business model that's currently out there, um, and that would again be an influx of cash for when you're doing these licensed events that that yep. helps pay the licensor to be able to do this event to have this custom thing and you know go from there so you know i'm actually thinking that the whole battle royale thing will be the the freemium part exactly of the product which means that like if you want to try out pimple fx um and you never perhaps seen it before you can go to the battle royale area you'll get access to a select number of tables available in the arenas and you can go nuts and play them and if you're again if you're not a diehard pinball fan you know it will lead to sales like you'll go gee this table's really fun i want to buy it so you'll go and buy it and you know it, it's just going to lead to sales if they do it right i would i almost think that that there's going to be some people who just won't. I think you're going to buy. have your free table, just like you have right now. Uh, you know, Fishtails is free Fishtails and, and uh, um, Sorcerer's Lair. Yes. I think you're still going to have that as your free. I think the Battle Royale, this is why I don't think that it's going to be, hey, we're Battle Royaling with uh, Getaway. I don't think mm -hmm. that's going to be it. I think it's going to literally be, uh, you know, hey, we're doing Star Wars this month. We created a Star Wars themed Battle Royale pinball. Right, right. You know, what I'd love to see. I'd love to see like a a joust style, like battle royale, where they actually you know, this group goes down the path of head to head, right? Mm -hmm. Where you actually have like a, a joust or a um, Elven G soccer ball style, right? Um, table where you can actually go head to head and actually do that sort of thing on there, right? Yeah, but and, and the, part of what I'm saying is they're seeking new audience. They're seeking different audience, right? Yeah. So this this whole platform of pinball FX is kind of a catch-all for all the possible audiences that you might have. You're going to have those that want the Zen Originals, boom, you got it. You're going to have those that want the Williams, boom, you got it. You're going to have those that never played pinball before, but they love Battle Royale-style games, you know. It's well, like, they may have never it. have played Tetris normally, but they like this, you know, it's the, or like Pac-Man Championship, What you know, that was a Battle Royale-type thing, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's so, like, you know, you, it's, you're bringing in players... Sneakily, <laughs> being mm. like, don't you like this? Well, while you're here, look, you're in this ecosystem. You downloaded Pinball Effects so that you can play this game. Why don't you try and sample some of our other wares? And there's where you're going to get the full, the actual sales, the product sales within the free game. So you're offering That's a lot right. of content for free, which is you'd be offering Battle Royale for free. You'd be offering those select tables for free. Um, yeah. that they always have and that's what's going to entice and if you're having live events and live head to head or whatever that's only going to bring in more type of people and keep the keep it active if your platform appears active and has a lot of people in it and are engaged that's more likely than that you're going to stay within it but the whole live events thing is interesting I wonder if that's going to almost be like hey let's get one of the um the voice actors that's done you know the work for one of these tables in for an ama you know and it'll actually be inside the app so they'll stream the interview in the app and it won't be available anywhere else like you know that sort of thing yeah i wonder if, you know, i mean yeah you know, I, I kind of know. think and again this is why they're probably rebooting they're making it so the sky is the limit yeah. and they can't do that currently with what they have it it is a bit of a walled garden at the moment from that perspective there are limitations on what fx3 can do um, and so, we were we were wondering what could possibly be the game plan for ten years. Why would you need a ten year plan? What would, where does pinball go from <laughs> from here, even five years from now? How is it wildly different? Well, well we've we seen just, how wildly different it's got. Yeah, like from like two thousand and ten to now, like just the innovation in pinball has 
like just absolutely gone through the roof. So if 10 years produces this much innovation in pinball, like, yeah. And, and <laughs> like if, you you're, need... if you're seeing, you know, Guns N' Roses from JJP doing online scoreboards, that Stern yeah. is starting to do that with, uh, what well, they do that with, uh, was it Led Zeppelin that was going to have online or... I can't remember, but I know. The, but they're talking about they're going to finally start doing online leaderboards themselves. Yeah. Clearly, oh, no, it was in that, it was in that, um, that uh, terms of service document that was. The oh, that's right, right. That's right. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, but clearly, even the real pinball companies are thinking in this direction. So it only makes it's sense. Engagement City, like they know it brings people back, and they want to compete because people want to compete, and you know it's hard at the moment. Um, with the world and the state it's in. So give us ways of doing it. You know, yeah. people are craving it. So let's wrap this up. New pinball effects, and it's just called pinball effects. Mm. For free, it sounds like that's just going to be it. There's not going to be sequels. It's like there. Windows 10. It's, I was just going to say, it's like Windows 10. It's Windows 10. Yeah, Windows 10 is now the version of Windows that you'll just have for decades. You'll always decades. have. Decades. Yes. Yeah, it's now so, Windows 10. It's now just going to be pinball effects. Um, yeah. Sometime in 2021. Yep. Battle Royale is probably attached to Pinball Effects. So pinball effects. you're not going to be playing that until you get Pinball Effects. So that's mm. sometime in 2021. New IPs. Those are probably going to be being seen previously, previous to Pinball Effects. Possibly. I think so. Um, I would, I would mm. think um, with new tables coming out. Because IPs aren't technically tied to no. uh, software version. No. No. Um, new engine. Am I missing anything? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know. There's a lot. There is a lot. Um, mm. That's what we're trying to you say. You just need to know, like, as you said before, Chris, you like why it may seem like a non-announcement. Oh, it's a big announcement. <laughs> you just need to know what you're looking for in it and yes. tease it apart. Which I, I do yeah. want to point out that in one of these Reddit threads, uh, Mel gave a response. Well, the blockade listeners have the inside scoop. You think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yes, you do. Well, what we're saying is, yeah, sure. There's going to be stuff that's on the pinball show. And then you're going to come here. And then you're going to learn about everything that was possibly being said. Um, That's right. And, oh, you know, odds are we'll still be able to get Mel on here occasionally to, to really hammer in some things. But Yeah, uh, really, really make him sweat. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm sure he gets, I'm sure he gets <laughs> nervous when he comes to our show. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I always wonder... I always think about when we post some of these that are highly speculative that because we know that they listen to these or watch these. Yeah. Um, how often they're just like, like, ah, oh, crap. They, Damn it, they, you they, guys. They, <laughs> we didn't tell you that. How did you know that? Ah. <laughs> exactly. Yep. We, 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 we can, can put two and two together and get four. We've been doing it for years. Yeah. We, we've hit close to the bone many a time. Um, yep. So that's a uh, that's it. That that is a big nugget of stuff right there. So it's not just Jeez. an announcement of an announcement. Look deeper. You'll see. There's plenty that was actually said without being said. Which mm -hmm. you know, for their show that was I think what twelve minutes long, and we spent an hour and ten on it on three minutes of the show. Um, yeah, yeah. So Zen, don't make it any longer than that. Otherwise, it'll be an eight-hour show. Oh my god. <laughs> We'll have to do a two-part or something. Can you imagine? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> look, folks, we appreciate you uh, watching this. Please do us a favor. I'm just, I hate being the like and smash button guy, but um, we've got a couple of a-holes that love, without watching our episodes, pushing the down thumb. And so all of a sudden we look like we're not a liked episode. So if you like what you're watching, do us a favor. Combat the trolls that just, and I know this because I look at the analytics and I can tell that people are watching literally 10 seconds. Guess who's probably giving us that thumbs down? It was long enough for them to hit that button and skid away. Um, yeah. I reckon it's probably even a bot, you know. Someone's just set up a, a YouTube bot to just downvote. Because you know? yeah. people do that sort of thing. I don't know. 
And it'll be for the most random episodes sometimes. So, yeah, I'm just saying, do us, do us a solid. If you, especially if you watched at this point, <laughs> you yeah. clearly are liking what you see. Do yeah. us a solid. Um, yep. Until next time. Who knows what it is we are going to be talking about other than Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. There you go. Bye-bye, folks. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.